The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the November 12th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time, thanks so much for doing so. We'll make sure that we make this show as pertinent as we can for your listening hour at uh, 1.07 in the evening but, or in the afternoon. But right now, it's 8.07 in the morning, so we're doing this show, uh, which is great. Uh, uh, for me, it's great. So, look, I would, if you're listening in, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Got a couple different ways for that to happen. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, that would be greatly appreciated. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, we'll take any ping, public or private, out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on uh, Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, 8.08 in the morning, we've got all the, US index, all the U.S. index futures pointed higher. The Dow's up 86 points, about a quarter of a percent. The S&P uh, about uh, 32, uh, I'm sorry, the NASDAQ 32 points, about two tenths. The S&P 7.5 points, nearly two tenths. And the Russell 2000 up five, that is two tenths of the upside. Spot volatility is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. So that's number one important fact here to know. So if you're asking me how do I begin my day, by when I begin my day, that's really what we're going to go through right now because what you and I are going to try to do is uh, interpret the message of the market. So that's what we'll do during this first segment here. Uh, and then this will certainly be applicable to um, your listening in the afternoon. So at least you get to kind of get a feel for what Stevie does. So that's really the first screen that I take a look at the morning when I uh, come into my, uh, my little cave out here and just get a feel for what went on. So here's what, we, and, and, and of course, we do this by interpreting price and the charts, which we'll get to momentarily. So what do we know about Asia last night? All their markets closed higher. Asia closed higher. Australia closed higher. What do we know about Europe? It's mixed right now. Now, for Europe, I'm just taking a look at the German DAX and the uh, FTSE out here, the FTSE in the UK. DAX is up 19 points. FTSE is down 34. We're going to go figure out exactly what that means. With regard to commodities, we can see that gold and silver are trading lower. Six bucks in the case of gold, 1857, three tenths percent. Silver off 20 pennies, that's eight tenths, trade out at 2509. Platinum's down 13 bucks. Palladium's up off eight dollars. Copper is uh, pretty much flat out here. Lights recruit back a buck 17. We'll figure out what that means. Natural gas off 11 cents. She's trading out at 50. Uh, 503. The 30 year Treasury is up five ticks, trading out at 161.30. US dollar index is back just a tad. I've got a 10 minute delay on the US dollar index out there. So that's how I begin the day. First, take a look at this screen. Really, I have four screens here. So that is kind of a lie to say I'm only looking at that one screen. But this is one of the screens that I begin with. The second screen is really trying to interpret the uh, data as to what it meant in overnight trading. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to those screens because we are really in a one world market. So we need to understand what's going on in Europe, in Asia. And so we begin by the upper left-hand panel chart. That is the Shanghai. The Shanghai put in wave number seven. That's letter G that you see in the bottom of my screen. That's courtesy of the uh, Basil Chapman Chapman wave. Now, it's such a small part of the Chapman wave. I do recommend that you take his courses and learn that because he's got some great tools out here. So this is not really the Chapman wave, but just one element of it, which is wave number seven. And a guy by the name of Saratoga Bob, 
in the uh, Tiger's Den, I think was the first one to really take a look at that seventh wave move on any time frame and notice that uh, most times it provided a top or bottom signal. Well, here in the case of the Shanghai generates a bullish hammer candle telling you the market's trying to hammer out a bottom. It is not a, a it is not a TD nine count bottom out there. The low did not take place on bars eight, nine, the bar following nine. But you've got wave number seven. What we know about the uh, Shanghai yesterday Nice, uh, nice follow through bar after that hammer candle. But the close above that oscillator and change line suggests a move up to the next resistance level, which for it would be 37.62.31. Not a guarantee that price will get there. It would be more of a guarantee, so to speak, if that oscillator and change line were green. It's red, tells us price oscillator is still below zero. But nonetheless, a further rally, counter trend or otherwise, should make its way up to that 37.62. So I know the Shanghai in essence, has given us a bullish message. We know the Hang Seng has also generated a bullish message. It does have a valid TD9 count uh, bottom out here. The low came, when I say the low, the low that held, we're looking at the bar following bar number nine. And even though that level was pierced, it was pierced a couple of days ago, doesn't matter. It's just that that low held, support had held. Now, price here is also above its oscillator and change line. It is red, not a guarantee, but does suggest that price should go make its way up to its TD9 breakdown resistance level of 26,234. So the Shanghai is saying I want higher price. The Hang Seng is saying I want higher price. The Nikkei now is also saying it wants higher price. Now, the Nikkei has formed an A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, last night, price got back above its green oscillator and change line. That is a more bullish signal. And so this suggests that price is targeting the 3600 area. So we've got Asia, which is weaker than the U.S. indices out here. They're all suggesting that they want higher price. Hmm, something to think about. Well, now let's go take a look at what's going on over at the DAX and the FTSE. The DAX is an ADB equals CD to the upside pattern out here. It had a TD9 count atop. That's that blue horizontal line going across my screen. And yesterday, price closed above it. The DAX and the uh, NASDAQ composite have a, got, have a very good good correlation. We'll take a look at that momentarily. So knowing that they have a correlation, and those of you that have been longtime listeners, you've seen that correlation, so you already know that answer. So we've got Asia saying it wants higher price. The DAX is saying it wants higher price out here. The FTSE is also saying it wants higher price. It's above its oscillator on change line. We don't have any kind of a topping signal that is in place out here. It does have wave number seven. So much like the Shanghai had a wave seven bottom. But the problem is we won't get a confirmed wave seven move until we see a lower high. And that is not the condition that we have present today. So therefore, it's suggesting to us that it, too, wants to move to higher ground. Well, so is the U.S. dollar index. The U.S. dollar index took out its uh, roads minimum indicator top. That was based on the last one formed out here a few days about last week a shooting star on uh, november the 5th to be exact that would be exactly last week that would be last friday and uh, when price closed above that a couple of days ago negated it yes you can still see those triggered roadsman to indicator signals but that doesn't mean it's a top you need some type of bearish reversal candle to confirm that so at this stage here u.s dollar index says it wants to move higher the euro says it wants to move lower the uh, yen has a td9 count top that is still in place and has found resistance at the top of its uh uh, at its oscillator and change line. So from an equity standpoint, the Asia says it wants higher price. Europe says it wants higher price. Even though the FTSE is pulling back a bit, that doesn't mean that it doesn't want higher price. It just means that it's pulling back and price is above that oscillator and change line. Okay, so that's one way to start the day. I, I, now I have a better perspective, or you should also have a better perspective, of what the messages around the world are communicating to us. Now we're going to go try to figure out how does that impact U.S. trading out here and how you can plan for your day. For those of you listening at 114, thanks so much for doing that. But maybe this will give you a perspective on maybe something you can take a look at to improve your trading. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. 
For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so we're taking a look at the DAX now, our second time to take a look at the uh, DAX out here. And the reason I want to do that is I don't want you to, I, don't, I, I want you, you know, Larry Pesavento, I love one of his phrases out there, which is do the work yourself. And, and certainly that's what I'm doing here. So don't trust anything that I say. Go back, take a look at it. Don't trust anything that anybody says. Go back and do the work yourself and see what the results are. Well, in this case here, I shared with you that the DAX and the NASDAQ uh, composite have a directional correlation. And that's a tool that we're taking a look at right now. The bottom panel is, uh, so what you don't see here is the third chart, which is the uh, DAX, uh, I'm sorry, which is the NASDAQ composite. But that's really reflected down below. You can see here where I've got correlation in the data box. It tells you it's got the correlation of the NASDAQ composite. So that way you know what it is that we're taking a look at. And this is looking at a directional correlation. That's all that it's doing. When bars are above zero, uh, it tells us that there is a directional correlation. This is a 10-day average that I'm using. Uh, typically, people will use a 20-day average on this, but I've got a 10-day uh, out here. So you can, and when bars are below zero, that tells us that you've got an inverse correlation. So we've established the directional correlation. And that's why it's important to take a look at the DAX and understand what it's doing. And now knowing that yesterday, it negated its topping pattern. Not that it doesn't have a another one that it could set up, but it doesn't have that in place today. And so yesterday's close above 16064.79 suggests we should be anticipating or looking at a potential bottom in the U.S. market as well. All right. What else can we take a look at? Well, we should always go take a look at what that spot volatility index is doing, right? That's the next level. We want to understand where's the spot volatility index trading in relationship to its 50-day exponential moving average. Well, what we can see here is yesterday we saw a slight close below that level. That level yesterday was priced at the 50-day. It was 1775. Today we are at 1773. Price is below 1773. What does that mean? Well, 
the interesting thing about being able to assess and interpret the message of the markets, we can use that 50-day uh, exponential moving average on the spot volatility index because for the most part, generally speaking, this chart here tells you that. Now, I don't have everything boxed in out here just because I just haven't taken the time to do that, but you can do this. The bottom panel represents a spot volatility index. Those yellow boxes and green boxes, the yellow boxes are identifying uh, us to us when the spot volatility index is above its 50-day exponential moving average. There we expect a sideways to lower move and the green boxes are showing us what the price activity looks like when the spot politics is below its 50-day expense moving average there sideways to upward move well so right now as we speak at 8 20 in the morning i don't know where we're at at 1 20 in the afternoon but that'll be important to interpreting the message of the markets at that point in time so it doesn't matter when it is. Of course, the close is going to be the key here. But as we speak at 821 in the morning, this signal is suggesting to us to expect and anticipate a rally. What's another thing we can look at? Well, to understand the message of the markets. And this is what I go through in the morning as I'm preparing or writing the uh, newsletter uh, for folks. So they'll see different time frames when I begin taking a look at different segments of the uh, newsletter. And all I'm really doing there is in my mind summarizing what the message is communicating to us so that I can share that with them, you know, in a, in a summary uh, on the top of the uh, uh, newsletter. So here we can also look at the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. The Advanced Decline Oscillator, that's panel number two, is measuring the difference between the 19 and 39 day exponential moving average of the Advanced Decline line. Now, I know that that's a mouthful. Now, but it is a mouthful. And it's a good mouthful. Yesterday, or the two days ago, so on, this is Friday, so on Wednesday, the advanced decline oscillator pushed just below the zero threshold level. You know, if you, if you listen to the show, you know Stevie believes in periods of two. You need two consecutive closes above resistance, two consecutive closes below support in order to confirm a signal. Well, it turns out that inside the New York Stock Exchange and its advanced decline oscillator, that is exactly how it works out here. One day below the oscillator and change line does not generate the signal. It generates the potential signal. The real signal comes on the following session, and yesterday price closed above the advanced decline, the zero left threshold level on the advanced decline oscillator. That says that buyers were always in control of the market. So here's what we've got here. We've got the Asian markets say they want higher price. The European markets say they want higher price. The spot volatility index says the S&P should continue higher. The New York Stock Exchange general market, that, you know, the general larger market out here, says that it too is in bullish mode out there. So now we're putting together those pieces. What is the next piece of the puzzle that we should look at? Well, regardless of that, we should see what's going on inside the U.S. markets from an, from a, you know, for at least from an intraday standpoint. That's exactly what Stevie does. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go change our screens. Now you're going to look at the 30-minute time frame for the equity futures contracts. Here on the upper left, you've got the ES, upper right, the NQ, the Dow's lower left, the Russell 2000 lower right. It's really the Dow's message, and the Dow has been the weaker of the four indices out here. That generated yesterday early afternoon uh, around, uh, I don't know what the exact time frame was, but let's go see if we can find out. At 4, uh, 16.30, at 4.30. Uh, six, yeah, yeah, at 4.30, yesterday afternoon, uh, as we were coming into the close, the uh, Dow confirmed, on a 30-minute basis, confirmed a rose momentum indicator bottoming signal out here. Price is above its current profile. Price is above the oscillator and change line. It's signaling to you and I that price wants to go target the 36036 level. I don't have any bottoming or topping signals in any of the other equity futures contracts. So right now my assumption is, or our assumption should be, that price is likely to target for all four of these equity future contracts. They're, they're TD9 breakdown resistance levels. Those are the green horizontal lines on my charts. They don't all go over to the right. I can extend them. So in the, but we don't need to extend them. In the case of the ES mini, that price target to the upside is 4659.75. Now, if price closes above that, that tells you about a further bullish message out here. For the NQ, the target is going to be 16163. Again, same message there. If price, that's resistance. You expect price to fail there. And if it doesn't and it continues to move higher, that's a signal that you should see a further rally. With regard to the Dow, its price target is 36,036, and the Russell is 24,2490. Now, even though I say that, if we take a look at the Russell 2000, it is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. In a TD9 count pattern, it's bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine that could identify the top. So what the Russell 2000 is signaling to you and I right now at 825 in the morning is that we have the potential for a TD9 count top that should form any time between 830 and 930 this morning. And if a TD9 count 
top forms below 24.2490. That's its TD9 breakdown resistance level. That's typically a bearish message out here. Wait a minute, Steve-O. You just spent 15, 20 minutes telling me that the markets were bullish. Folks, what I'm doing is I'm going through a process here to help us evaluate the markets and its intent. I'm not going to be disingenuous at any point during the process. Of course, what we were looking at earlier were daily charts. Now what we've done is we've dug down, you know, we've gotten into the minutia of what's going on from an intraday standpoint. And the only one of these four equity futures contracts that are signaling any type of potential topping signals, Russell 2000. So we most certainly want to pay attention to that. You most certainly want to pay attention to that 930 this morning, 930, 930, 10, because if it forms a TD9 count pattern and negates it. By negates it, it takes out, it closes above the high of the pattern, the high of bars 8, 9, the bar following 9. That tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside. We don't have that message just yet, but you need to be able to anticipate the message, either side of it. So what else? What's the last piece of this puzzle here? And I could have really gotten to it uh, quickly um, and right off the bat, because when I say this, you're going to say, Steve-O, Come on, why didn't you just give me the, the masculine version of what you're doing out here and the message of the markets by just going right to the punch and the only thing that we need to pay attention to? Well, that's my way of keeping you through this next breakout here. You've got to stay with us for at least the next couple of minutes, a couple of paid commercials, and then we'll go show you the chart that I think is the most important chart of the day to help us understand the direction of the markets in the U.S. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hey, 
focusing on the cake chart out here, even though we took a look at all that uh, information, you know, tells us what's going on overseas. The question is what's really taking place inside the U.S. market. Since so we take a look at this chart, just a 30 minute time frame chart for the ES mini. And what I've identified here is uh, basically the, uh, you know, the opening range uh, time frame between 930 and 10. And what we can see here is that uh, this takes a look at the last eight days. Uh, worth of uh, trading out here. What we can see is since the high that came in, that was on the trading day of November the 5th, and right at 10 o'clock in the morning, we saw markets move lower. What is that telling us? Well, look overseas, what we've looked at, they're saying, hey, markets should move higher. And if we're going to see that, then we're going to see a little bit of change in direction here uh, during the 9.30 or 10 o'clock session. What we can see here is all the selling that is really taking place here in the U.S. market. It's really being pushed uh, by U.S. traders. You have to assume that in the, in the futures market out here, uh, you don't have to assume, I just kind of use as a basic general understanding is that we have, not that U.S. traders aren't trading here, but you've got the Europeans and the Asian traders uh, and, and everybody else that are up while we're, you know, partying, eating and going to sleep and so forth out here. But here we can clearly see that the selling begins between 9.30 and 10 this morning. So we can take all of that stuff that I shared, the, all that stuff that I shared, it says to you and I, we should not be surprised if we see the markets move higher. At the same time, the question is, are the U.S. sellers still here or gone? So what you really want to do, this show ends at 9 o'clock or just a few minutes before 9 o'clock, is you really want to take a look at what's the direction. And you can put this, well, I don't know if you've got an ES Mini chart or not. If you, if you, if you do, then what I, would, what I would recommend taking a look at is if you start seeing the markets trading lower by 10 o'clock, if they're continuing to move higher out here, based upon all the other evidence that you and I looked at, you should not be surprised to see a market continuing to move higher. But I think this is perhaps the most important chart. I didn't want to really get to it uh, because we really needed to have the background information out there. So hopefully that helps you understand whether you're listening at 830 in the morning or whether you're listening at 130 in the afternoon uh, and putting this all together out there. So what else do subscribers get? They get a couple other things I'll just share with you and show you. You can make a determination whether this information would help you or not. So first, we're going to take a look at uh, different market analyzers that I provide uh, folks with. This market analyzer is telling you what the current outlook is based upon Stevie's tools, and I share exactly what uh, how these calculations were made uh, inside the uh, newsletter out here. But this tells us, if we wanted to understand what is the market condition for these instruments that I have here, it tells us about our daily, our weekly, our monthly, and it goes down into those intraday time periods out here. So it gives us a 15, a 30, a 65, and a 130-minute look. And then we go the column. It says DRMI. This tells us whether we've got roads momentum indicator top or bottom signals. Then you go to the TD9 count there. Area. This will show, as of uh, last night's uh, close out here, any instruments. We're looking for eights, nines, or we're really looking for something with a star. A star out here, even whether it's got a one or not, a star tells us that there's a valid TD9 count pattern. doesn't tell us on this chart whether it was a top or bottom. So you've got to go back and take a look at that. Plus, there's also another chart I'll, that actually I'll put up on the screen that does tell us whether it was a top or bottom. But it gives us our TD9 counts. It gives us our Chapman wave to the upside, to the downside. gives us our oscillator and change line, whether it's support or resistance. It uh, tells us where our, D, our, our TD9 um, uh, support levels are, resistance levels are, our TAS profile support. And resistance. So a ton of information. If you trade any of these instruments, this will be uh, very helpful to you. Another thing that uh, we take a look at, uh, oops, almost uh, closed that out. We certainly didn't want to do that. That would have shut down the whole system. So good thing I caught that. Uh, here is another. There's really a set of charts. This set of charts, let's take a look at this one first. Here, what we're looking for, this is just really our top and bottom signal finder. So I've got the cash indices, I've got the index ETFs, the sectors in the S&P, the equity futures contracts, what's going on in metals, oil and gas, bonds, other commodities, and just some other popular ETFs that uh, subscribers want me to report on. So here on a daily, weekly, monthly, you can see all the roads momentum indicator signals, or you can see the TD9 counts for the daily, weekly, monthly. You can see the Chapman wave counts for the daily, weekly, monthly, to the upside and to the downside. And then you've got two columns here that tell us about the last daily TD9 count top. If it has a star next to it, it tells you the pattern is still in effect. If it doesn't have a star, it just tells you when the last one to form, but it's no longer in effect, meaning that price negated that top or bottom signal. Now, we have that both for all of these instruments, and then we have many people that manage their long-term portfolios, and they have a mix of uh, U.S. and international equities. Well, here, 
you can see what's going on on many of the international markets out here. So these are the ETFs that you can trade if you're interested in trading emerging markets or maybe Russia or Hong Kong or Switzerland or wherever it is you might trade. And this gives you that same information so you understand the status of those instruments. Extremely helpful uh, for you in managing your portfolio. So that's the information. They get much more than that. I just wanted to be able to share that with you. So let's do this here. Uh, I've been babbling for a while, uh, hopefully good babble out there. And let's go to our first question. We've got one question that is coming by email, and it is from Brent in Martinez, California. He's kind enough to join us at this uh, very early stage, so that's a wonderful thing. So I want to be able to get to that. I've got to change screens here, so bear with me just for a moment. We'll go back to those black background screens just for a moment. Let's get back to the symbol that he wants to take a look at, which is ticker symbol DM. Now I want to get this fired up on my white background charts and right now let's go to his question his question reads like this the question is good morning your long dm from the recent lows would appreciate your analysis i believe there was a uh, test yesterday of the oscillator and change line which turned green a few days ago what other levels of resistance support to watch for any other information and have a great day and a weekend you too brent thanks so much for joining us early so if we take a look at desktop metal out here here's what we know first what we're looking at folks on this chart for, imagine if I didn't have the TAS market profiles out there. And those are the blue or the red or colored uh, lines that we have out there. I say I've got uh, multiple uh, uh, color coloration of lines out here. Here's what you just need to know. The bottom of a line is where buyers reside. The top of the line is where sellers reside. In the center is where both buyers and sellers believe that this instrument is fairly valued with inside that range, the range of the top and the bottom. If you take a look at desktop metal, you can see that that center of the profile is pretty much in the center. So it doesn't lean one way or the next. It doesn't have a bias. Here's what we know. We know where support is at. So Brett knows if there was a close below 801, that could be a problem or at least suggest lower price. And if there's a close above 913, that would be a beautiful thing because that suggests higher price. Now, the daily and weekly and monthly may have different uh, uh, pieces of uh, different pieces. Of, well, they're going to have different profile levels, most certainly. And they're going to provide us then with different information. The weekly here is saying, hey, I'm above the top of the weekly profile, closed above it last week. Looks like it'll close above it this week. That's telling us about a change in trend on the intermediate medium term time frame. So what the daily chart is just saying is we've got a skirmish going on. Don't know who's going to win at what levels, but we know where the offense and the defense reside, and that is a competitive edge. On a monthly time frame, it would suggest, hey, price below the bottom of its daily profile, which also happens to be the center. So that's strong support. Now, because price is above it, it's strong resistance. So 1257 is a potential price target if price can close above 913. That's what this message tells us. Let's pull over the white background chart. And Brent was exactly right, a very astute trader out here. Wonderful to have him on our TFNN team. And we can see that the oscillator and change line about four or five days ago changed colors. That is the green and red line that is on my chart. When that changes color, that tells us that the price oscillator, that's the difference between the 19 and 39 day exponential moving average of price out there, price oscillator. An oscillator does nothing more than tell you the difference between two things. Here, what we're measuring is the difference between two exponential moving averages. And when that changes color, we expect or anticipate that price is going to meet up with it. Well, that's exactly what took place yesterday. And that test and rejection is a bullish message. Still has a skirmish. It still has a battle inside these profile levels. But Brent is exactly right. And that's after forming a nice road's momentum indicator bottom way back here in the early October time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFN. When we get back from this break, we'll finish taking a look at DM for Brent in Martinez, California. Great. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. If you are listening at 1.42 in the afternoon, thanks so much for doing that. We're recording today's show uh, early, obviously, and being replayed then. Trying to make it as pertinent as we can for you at that time as well. So we're taking like a ticker symbol DM. And uh, Brent caught this uh, towards the uh, bottom, so that's a beautiful thing. Shows that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal as we looked at. If somebody were to ask me uh, where would be the buy point on this, uh, had they missed that, the buy point, we would have come up with really two areas. We would have said the bottom of its profile would be the best buy point. That's at 801. Yesterday, price got pretty close to it. And the oscillator and change line, especially knowing that it had changed colors. So it's very possible, not a guarantee, but it's very possible that what took place yesterday was the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside. Now, we won't know that until the swing point from the trading session of, well, let me get my cursor out here. Uh, from the trading day of November 4th gets taken out. And that high is going to be 969. But it really has that potential and that possibility. Now, if you were the person that was going to take or add to your position inside of DM, that piece of the pie, you would consider really closing that out if you saw it close below 801. That would tell us, okay, we might see lower price. We would likely see lower price if you see it close below the bottom of that profile. So it's nice because you've got your back up against the wall, so to speak. Um, I'm not doing the reward risk uh, uh, for you. But in essence, I'm providing you with the information. Your stop would need to be below 801. That's So we know that. That's for sure. Uh, with regard to a price target to the upside, we now at this stage here, we have to assume there's the potential for an A to B equals CD to the upside. Again, not confirmed. Well, if that potential, where would that potential take us if, in fact, that's the way the pattern plays out? Well, the first projected area would be 1104. What we can see here is that the retracement was only 54%. So anything less than 0.618 increases the odds that what we're going to see is a uh, increase of the odds that we're going to see a uh, what was I saying? Uh, more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. So the real range really between 1104 and 1186. Now, Brent was asking me for perhaps some upside information. And really, that to me, that would be the upside information. Now, I would use the conservative approach, the conservative approach being 1104 out there. Um, is there any other information that I can provide to Brent? The last piece here comes from the 30-minute time frame chart. 
On the 30-minute time frame chart, what we can see out here, you can see a, a TD9 count top. This was at 11.30. This is on November the 8th. We can see a TD9 count bottom. That formed yesterday morning. Price was pulling back to its breakout level, 8.07. And so now what we know is that to the downside on a short-term basis, if price closed below 8.07, certainly for two consecutive bars, that's telling us about lower price. If we take a look at resistance, that's at 8.75. So what you'd like to see is resistance fail. And if 875 fails, that's another clue that what yesterday's low might have been was the C point of an A to B equals CD pattern out there. So I hope that that helps you all, Brent. Thanks much for writing in and uh, being up with us early. It's 545 in the morning in, uh, in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area which is where Brent is at. So that's a beautiful thing. Okay, so what else can I share with you? You know what we haven't done? Let's just kind of get a general overview of how uh, several different instruments are trading. For that, I go to what I use for my market update at 1 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll do that market update at 9 o'clock this morning. But here we can do is in one quick uh, view, we can see what's going on, you know, with many instruments out here. So, for example, you've got the ES Mini in the upper left-hand side. The ES Mini, we've taken a look at and said, look, markets and signals are suggesting that we should see higher price. The last piece of that puzzle is going to come between 9.30 and 10, 10 30 this morning when we see what the direction of the ES mini is based upon the last eight trading days out here. So if it's to the upside, the first resistance level for the ES mini is going to be the center of its profile. Kind of a devilish num uh, number out here because it's 46.66, three sixes in a row. So that would be also where you could expect a counter trend rally to form. Now, if price closes above 46.66, that the spot volatility is going to be below its 50-day expense moving average. It already is, but it's not going to get above that level, or it shouldn't, I should say. And if and if the spot volatility, that's panel number two, is below that level, and we see a close above 46.66, the signal is don't be short. Don't be short now. If you want to short, then short at the top of the profile, and that would be 47.11, because the message would be that that's where price wants to head to. Now, the NQ is trading below the top of its daily profile. So there's another key level to watch. If really the message of the European and the Asian markets uh, and really the spot volatilities and New York Stock Exchange are suggesting that we should see higher price, then the key level that the NQ will close above is going to be the top of that daily profile. So another key area to be watching, whether it's 147 in the afternoon or it's 847 in the morning right now, is 1610580. Call it 16106. If you see a close above that or if price is trading above that, that's telling you that it is attempting to break out. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, it is trading higher. It has broken out. It has an A to B equals CD pattern. It's a conservative price projection out here. The A point that I would start with is down on the trading low of uh, September 3rd. The high was the resistance level. Uh, which was a TD9 count area. Actually, what I, yeah, I'm going to use that one as the, uh, can I? Yeah, I can still use that one as the uh, B point. And then for the C point, I'm using the low out here from the trading day of October the, uh, what was that, October the 28th? October 28th. So here you can see the one-to-one -one price projection takes us to 96.05. Now, somebody out there probably just said, wait a minute, Steve-O, you're saying the U.S. dollar index is going to 96.05. Isn't gold going to croak? So for those people out there, and I'm going to move off of this chart. We'll come back to it, though. I want to be able to answer that question because I know that was in somebody else's mind out here. My answer is no, no, no. Don't think like that. Please do not think like that. I want you to think like a global trader. When you can have a global perspective, it'll put things in into a better perspective. Now, I expect that we're going to see that gold is moving lower in all the major currencies, but that's where we're headed to as soon as I can find where I put that chart. It's right here. So here we take a look at gold. Now, what I want you to understand is take a look at this rise in gold in pounds, in yen, and in euros, way above. For, so, for example, here's what I can do. I'm going to put my cursor on this bar. Let me pull this back on the U.S. dollar. So the cursor will align itself. The cursor right now will align itself with, uh, let me pull this back too as, as well. Shoot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really have to pull it back. Uh, but the cursor right now will align itself uh, on all four charts as to where price is at. So I want you to take a look at, at take a look at this as we go back on the U.S. dollar index out here. So now we're at, at its highs, the highs from June the 1st. But look at where price is at on June the 1st for all of the other instruments, price in those currencies, euros, yen, and pounds. Do you really think that people that trade in those currencies, and folks, people are trading those currencies all the time, that those are bears out there? 
it's it's about how an instrument is trading in all these currencies, not just how about it's trading inside of U.S. dollars. So can gold go higher and the U.S. dollar index go higher? Absolutely. With gold, with, with the U.S. dollar index going higher, what's the message that it's generating for us? Some, some person might say, oh, the only message is that just simply that it's generating a message that it's going higher. No. What it's telling us is telling us that global capital has confidence in the U.S. And that is an underlying fundamental thing that each of us need to understand. Because to a certain extent, we can take a lot of these uh, TD9 counts, A to B equals CDs, all this other stuff, and you can almost throw it out the window. Because when global capital hits the shores of the USA, and here you can see it, here's global capital. Right now, you can take a look at how the Dow is trading uh, since the beginning of the year. You can see the returns inside of U.S. dollars, about a 19%. Uh, inside of uh, euros, 27%. Inside of yen, 31%. Inside of pounds, 22%. Now, compare that to how other markets are trading. The global flow of capital is on our shores out here. We're the best of maybe the worst out there when we take a look at stuff. But we just want to understand things can be falling apart across the globe. Money's got to go somewhere. It has to flow somewhere. Our role is to figure out where it's flowing. Well, here, this tells us where it's flowing. So the good old U.S. of A. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol ACIU. That is AC immune for one of our dinners, just looking for profile levels. So you've got a daily profile that formed yesterday. Price is below that. That's a bearish message. On a weekly basis, the level that you're watching, price is right back at support. And that's the bottom of that profile at 604. Last night's close was 605. If you see a close below 604 today, then the signal is that price should pull back to 563 or 506 or somewhere in that range. That's a bullish structured monthly profile. So that's what's going on. We take a look at ACIU. Let me just quickly peek, see if there's any other information out here. On one of my other charts, there isn't. Uh, so no additional information to provide for you there. So I hope that helps you out. My apology, I don't recall who asked me for that. The next request uh, coming inside the Tiger Zen is to take a look at my eight panel chart for silver. So let me get that uh, fired up. We're going to change screens here. And as soon as we get over to that change screen, you'll see eight different time frames. You'll see the monthly time frame in the upper left hand corner. Then we'll go off to the weekly, the daily. Then you've got a 30, 60, 120, 240 and five hour time frame chart. So what do we know about uh, silver out here? Well, for one, we know that silver is inside its bullish structured monthly profile. Its next level of resistance is 25.62. If price can close above that, the signal is price should move to 29.91. We take a look at uh, the weekly chart. It formed a TD9 count bottom. That's that blue horizontal line. Price held that level. Price is above the top of its weekly profile. That is suggesting to you and I that price should move up to the 28.22 level. As long as price this week, today, close above 24.59. That's what it needs to do. Really need to see that close above it again next week, but today's close, it's important above 24.59 is suggesting 28.22. If we take a look at the daily time frame, I don't have any kind of a topping pattern out here at all. There's a new A to B equals CD to the upside that had formed. So this too is suggesting that it wants higher price. I can't do the A to B equals CD on this white background chart. If we take a look at um, the 30 minute chart, price pulls back to its breakout levels in the 24.94 area. Uh, that's a positive this is suggested to move today maybe up to 2538 but watch 2494 that's a key level of support folks thanks so much for joining me here early this morning for listening at the normal time thanks as well i'll be back at the normal programming hour at one o'clock on monday have a fantastic friday fantastic weekend great to be with you be safe out there Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.